Hello, and welcome to our 2023 Review of the Year. Let's take a look back at some of the issues which hit the headlines over the last 12 months. At the turn of the year, the Westminster government announced proposals for a new law on conversion therapy in England and Wales. It said a draft bill would be published in full later in the year, promising it would apply to those struggling with gender confusion. Equalities Minister Kemi Badenoch pledged to ensure a new law would not criminalise everyday religious practice. The government also moved to block Holyrood's gender self-ID bill. Scotland's Secretary Alistair Jack exercised his powers under the Scotland Act to veto the Gender Recognition Reform Bill, which would have allowed 16-year-olds to change their legal sex by self-declaration in just six months and without a medical diagnosis. In February, the Church of England voted to welcome plans to allow churches to bless people in same-sex partnerships. In response, a global group of Anglican bishops announced it could no longer recognise the Church of England's leadership. The Global South Fellowship of Anglican Churches, which claims to represent 75% of Anglicans worldwide, said the C of E had chosen to break fellowship with those who remain faithful to biblical sexual ethics. Pro-life campaigners who were arrested for silently praying near an abortion centre in Birmingham were vindicated. A judge dismissed cases against Isabel von Spruce and Roman Catholic priest Sean Goff after the Crown Prosecution Service failed to provide any evidence and dropped the charges. And an official study revealed that there is little or no evidence that conversion therapy is taking place in the Republic of Ireland. Despite this, Equalities and Integration Minister Roderick O'Gorman heralded the publication of the report as an important step towards legislating for a ban on conversion practices. March saw the Prime Minister commit to bringing forward a review of statutory guidance on relationships and sex education. The pledge came after he was presented with a request signed by 50 MPs and a 130-page report documenting unsuitably sexually explicit teaching resources. Hamza Youssef was elected to succeed Nicola Sturgeon following her resignation as First Minister in February. In one of his first actions as leader, he announced his intention to push through the SNP's Block Gender Self-ID Bill. He also stated his intention to liberalise abortion law and ban peaceful protests and prayer near abortion clinics. And just prior to Easter, Christian MP Nick Fletcher used a debate in Westminster Hall to share the gospel with his fellow parliamentarians. In his speech on the importance of Christianity in society, Mr Fletcher also explained how social reformers of the past, such as William Wilberforce, Lord Shaftesbury and Hannah Moore, were all motivated by their faith in Christ. And the 27th of April marked 55 years since the Abortion Act came into effect in Great Britain. In that time, over 10 million abortions have been carried out and currently around one in five pregnancies ends in abortion in the UK. In May, a member of the Irish Parliament warned that people are at risk of arrest for supposedly hateful thoughts under the Irish government's proposed hate crime bill. Paul Murphy TD said the legislation was in danger of criminalising someone in possession of material deemed hateful and amendments he proposed to defend the right to freedom of expression were voted down and genetically modified babies were born in the UK for the first time. Scientists at the Newcastle Fertility Centre created the babies by employing a technique known as three-person IVF, which involves a chromosome mother, an egg mother and a sperm father. June began with the Westminster government announcing that compulsory relationships and sexuality education classes would be introduced in Northern Ireland. NHS England announced its intention to end the routine prescription of puberty-blocking drugs for gender-confused children. New guidance said clinical policies should be mindful that confusion around feelings about gender may be a transient phase and that interventions for gender-confused children should be primarily psychological support. And Christian MSP Kate Forbes encouraged people of faith not to allow fear to push them out of politics. The former finance minister said that, despite experiencing repeated attacks during the SNP leadership contest, she refused to make her biblical stance on sexual ethics more palatable or politically correct. 
July saw a Christian parent governor who had been axed for challenging an inappropriate sex ed policy at her kids' primary school formally vindicated by the High Court. The Gateshead School, for which she volunteered, accused her of opposing the governing body's collective decision to approve the trans-affirming policy and removed her. But the court reinstated her after the governing body and local authority both admitted her dismissal had been unlawful. And a study showed that gambling-related ads appeared every four seconds during televised Premier League matches in the 2022-23 season. In a sample of 10 broadcast matches, researchers documented well over 15,000 gambling-associated ads and logos, including more than 3,500 in one game. That's 37 for every minute of game time. Costa Coffee came under fire in August for promoting double mastectomies for gender-confused women. A cartoon image circulated widely on social media appeared to show a topless young woman bearing the marks of breast surgery and drinking from a Costa Coffee cup. A Costa spokesman said it was celebrating diversity. And drug-related deaths in Scotland topped 1,000 for the fifth year in a row. 1,051 people died of drug misuse in 2022, at a rate of almost 20 deaths per 100,000 people. That's 2.7 times higher than the 2021 UK average and the worst in Europe. A major poll commissioned by the Christian Institute revealed that banning conversion therapy was a priority for just 4% of UK voters. Support for a ban was almost as low in the Republic of Ireland, with just 6% regarding it as a priority. The polling result was revealed shortly after the Institute wrote to Rishi Sunak, urging the government to avoid legislation that mirrors the activist lauded draconian rules in Victoria, Australia. New guidance there states that Christians can only pray in a way that affirms everyone is perfect as they are, and brands prayers speaking about a person's brokenness or need to repent as harmful and likely to be illegal. And towards the end of a busy month, the online safety bill passed its final hurdle in Parliament. The amended bill, which became law in October, requires social media and pornography websites to implement age verification that is highly effective at correctly determining whether or not a particular user is a child. A clause criminalising legal content deemed harmful to adults had already been dropped following a long-running CI campaign. October again saw the Prime Minister emphasising that the reality of biological sex should be upheld in all areas of public life, as he declared a man is a man and a woman is a woman. In contrast, at the Labour Party conference, Shadow Woman and Equality Secretary Annalise Dodds announced the party was committed to imposing a comprehensive law on so-called conversion therapy. She said a Labour law would have no loopholes and would be trans-inclusive she announced the party would also look to amend a law on changing legal sex if it won the next general election. Scores of Conservative MPs gave their support to a backbench bill to ensure parents have a legal right to view sex education materials. Miriam Kate's Relationships and Sex Education Transparency Bill would require schools to share copies of text and images used in RSE lessons with parents and ban them from using unpublished third-party teaching resources. In November, the Christian Institute warned that proposed changes to legislation on terrorism and extremism could threaten religious freedom. Following pro-Hamas protests across the UK, the Department for Communities was said to be working on a new definition of the term extremism, which could encompass groups whose behaviour helps create a climate conducive to terrorism, hate crime and other violence. An appeal court in Finland dismissed all charges of alleged hate speech against Christian MP Dr. Paivi Rosanin after she shared the Bible's teaching on homosexuality in 2019. In a unanimous decision, judges in Helsinki found no reason to overturn an earlier ruling which had upheld the Christian's right to free speech. And at the end of the month, pro-abortion MPs made an attempt to hijack the government's criminal justice bill to decriminalise abortion in England and Wales although Labour MPs Dame Diana Johnson and Stella Creasy claim their amendments would not allow abortion up to birth, it would mean that no woman could be prosecuted for taking pills to abort her baby at home, even after the current 10-week limit. And finally, 
the year ended as it began, with parliamentarians considering proposals for a new law on conversion therapy. In response to a private member's bill in the House of Lords, the CI commissioned a fresh legal opinion from top human rights lawyer Jason Koppel KC, who warned the wide-ranging bill posed a threat to fundamental freedoms. And the Scottish Government's appeal against Westminster's veto of its Gender Recognition Reform Bill failed after the Outer House of Scotland's Court of Session ruled against it. Judge Lady Haldane decided Scotland's Secretary, Alistair Jack, reasonably and lawfully blocked the bill in order to protect the integrity of UK-wide equalities legislation. Before we finish, we'd like to take a moment to remember some of those who passed into glory this year. Operation Mobilisation founder George Verwa was born in New Jersey in the United States in 1938 and came to faith in Christ aged 16. Just two years later, Verwa began the work of OM on a mission trip to Mexico. Today, OM has over 3,000 workers in nearly 150 countries across the world. He went to be with the Lord in April aged 84. In September, Christian philanthropist and former CEO of Hawes Bank, Jeremy Marshall, died aged 60 after a 10-year battle with cancer. His book, Beyond the Big Sea, led to numerous evangelistic opportunities, and his passion for sharing the gospel one-to-one -one led him to become chairman of Christianity Explored. And in October, Tom Ellis, a respected lawyer and longtime friend of the Institute, also joined his saviour, aged 68. Tom worked with us on many of our most significant religious liberty cases, from representing street preachers and B&B owners to taking on Google. The Institute solicitor advocate Sam Webster paid tribute, saying, Tom was humble and generous. He always put the cause of Christ first in his work. Thank you for standing with us through another challenging year. Your prayers and support have made such a difference and are invaluable to us and our work. We give thanks to God and trust him to provide for us and for you in 2024. From Joanna and me and everyone at the Christian Institute, we pray you have a blessed new year. For more great content, like, subscribe and hit the notification bell.